didn't John Knox have several prophecies come true? So, David, you seem to be ready for that one. Go ahead and answer that one, brother. Well, um, what I would say is this, that there is a difference between what the prophets in the Bible were doing as they received the holy inspired word of God. There's a difference between that and providential illumination by the Holy Spirit. Um, those two things are not the same thing. And uh, I'll just give you a, a for instance. All right. And, and, and I would even say, although the Holy Spirit is at work at all times, I think in, in, in many situations, in every situation, um, his, his supernatural revelation is not even necessary to make an accurate prediction. I could have made a prediction last week that the Chicago Bears were going to lose on Sunday. You know how I could have made that prediction? Because providentially, I'm born in Chicago, man, and I live here, and I know that the Bears always lose, okay? They always lose. And I could have, man, I could have said, hey, the Bears are going to lose, man. And then the Bears just got trounced, trampled by the Green Bay Packers. It wasn't even close. It was 38 to 20, the final score. But that was, it was not even as close as the score would seem. Okay. Uh, oh, does it take, does it take supernatural revelation in order to, for me to make a prophecy? Even to watch, I'm going to say this now. <laughs> And then next week, the Bears are just going to destroy their or the other team. I could even probably say the Bears are going to lose next week too, man. You know why? Because I know them. And I, I, I see past their past behavior, and I see it as an indication of future behavior. And it doesn't take a genius, and it certainly doesn't take, uh, you know, the revelation in order for me to make an accurate prediction. In the same kind of way, I could even say something like um, Warren Buffett. He wouldn't consider himself a prophet. He's not a prophet, uh, but he's a very rich man. Why is he a rich man? Because he was able to read providential events that took place and then make investments based on the way that he reads providence. Okay, Now, he wouldn't call it providence. But nevertheless, that is what he's doing. Yeah. He's, he's reading the times and making a prediction based on that. So uh, suffice it to say, prophecy is not necessary. Uh, the biblical sense of prophecy is not necessary in order for someone to make an accurate prediction about something that happens in the future. And, and yeah. what the claim is that we're making is this, that the actual definition of prophecy has never changed. It prophecy Amen. is always a divine revelation to a prophet that is perfect 100% of the time. And any of these people who say things like, oh, Agabus was wrong. We're going to, we talk about Agabus quite a bit in this film. He, he's the only person that uh, these charismatics can bring up in the New Testament and say, oh, he got a prophecy wrong. He did not get a prophecy wrong. Uh -huh. Not even close. And Nathan Buzanitz does a fantastic job. Don't spoil job. it. Don't spoil it. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He, he's saying, you know, don't don't throw the prophet under the Agabus. Okay? And yeah. and, and uh, and uh, yeah. you know, let, let me let me let me say something real quick. Uh, yeah. so to to all of that, um, th because there is so that's part of this entire uh issue that people bring up because mm -hmm. there actually is some reformers who who did identify some of those things as prophecies mm -hmm. and they would say that these people were prophesying, not just reading providence. So, if that's your perspective. And you'd think that someone like John Knox, for example, or Spurgeon were able to, at, at, at specific moments, were able to sort of do something that seemed to be supernaturally inspired. Yeah. Um, that's still not the gift of prophecy. Sure. So John Knox never claimed to be a prophet. He never, sure. he didn't go around making prophecies that if they would have failed, he would have been stoned to death. The, that's not the that's not the character. It wasn't he wasn't a prophet in the biblical sense. He wouldn't claim it. 
Nobody understood him to be that. They, after the fact, they looked back at some of the things he said and they said, wow, this was, this was inspired by the Lord. And some people truly believe yeah. that, that it, it was, but so, so even for us, like, we're not saying God could never do something like that. He could never give someone even a prophetic word. I definitely yeah. don't think that's happening. I don't think it's a normative practice in the church, but, right. just, but I'm also not saying that it could never happen. But what I am saying is the, the, the office, the gift of prophecy, as we saw mm -hmm. specifically in the new Testament, um, that gift is no longer there. And I know that because where are they? Where are the prophets? They're not here in the ones that claim to be are liars and they're yeah, wrong all the time. So yeah. it's not the, the, the way that I know that the gift of prophecy is no longer active in the world is because the gift of prophecy is not active in the world. Where are they? They're not here. They don't exist. There's not one single prophet that any charismatic can ever point to that is 100% right all the time. And so instead of that, what they've had to do is alter the very definition of the word and yeah. say pr prophecy in the New Testament is not perfect like it was in the Old Testament. That's, but, that's it. It's become a, a misappropriated terminology uh, yep. and well, ill-defined at it's that. Been, it's been purposefully manipulated yep. in order yep. to justify things that people want it like i said it, it's it's mm -hmm. larping if you know what larping is they're they're play acting yeah. as if like magic is a part of christianity like well, they, that, they that do it they do it distorted it's gotten they do it with tongues they do it with yep. prophecy and they do it with with healing yep. Yep. yeah yeah yep and agreed we, we made a movie that's two hours long that demonstrates that so. <laughs> fantastic all right um so, uh, Reform Johnny asked this question. I think this is the last. This is actually uh, the last one. I brought up the, the previous statement, but Reform Johnny asked after the premiere at G three, where will the film be available? So, uh, uh, G three uh, helped develop a deluxe edition. So, currently, that's the only way you can get a physical copy. Uh, discs will be available uh, co uh, coming soon. But right now, if you want a physical disc. Uh, the deluxe edition is is your is it's a great product. So check that out um, on the G3 website, okay. um, and then it's going to be streaming on Vimeo for sure. And pre order is already open for Vimeo, um, but I'm working on getting it on Amazon right now. So we might have it up on Amazon. I don't know how long that process is going to take, um, but it should be on Amazon at some point soon, and then mm -hmm. probably on um, on YouTube. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, for, for renting uh, and then we also have a website what's that we also have a website right they won't be streaming I, on the website but but right yeah that's as, you know, as there'll, there'll be lot, right lots now. of streaming oh yeah so if you go to cessationistmovie.com in the next yeah. few days uh, hopefully we'll have a full-fledged website up that, uh, that 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 should have been done done a long time ago but um, yes so there'll be lots of ways to see it so, guys, let me take a moment here just again to say thank you so much for being on. We do appreciate your time. We appreciate the wisdom that you all have shared. I appreciate the work that you all have done and continue to do. I look forward to getting to meet you all, Les. Be, be cur do, doing them curls. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm very – you don't understand how nervous I am about this. This <laughs> So, oh, so maybe we can get David and Tim to to video from two angles. Oh, I thought uh, you were going to say to also arm wrestle me at the same time. So both, the fun. both the arm wrestling contest and uh, the video evidence of you admitting the Reformed Baptist is better. So, dude, dude, <laughs> as for video evidence, evidence, bro, um, Claude, man, maybe you need to like edit a lot of things in this video. Just, no, just it's live. Out. This is up, dude. If what's been said has been said, yeah. it's out there. And, and <laughs> behind all of it, everything that was said was was accurate and true. Amen. <laughs> I've never listen. You know, I've I've never had it all in my life. I I am straight edge. That's what pe that's what people should know about me. And, and you should know that this bond between the three of us here breaks when we hit that movie 
uh, Pedro Baptist because do we had a, Les said he wants to make that movie, so, oh, yeah. so we we will cross that bridge when we come to it. Hey, now you got to be willing to practice what you're That's right. You guys have folks. to watch it. That's right. You have to you have to yeah. make it. You 